What are we looking at today, guys? Well, we have a pretty rare knife. This is the Masters of Defense Harkin Triton. Um, J.A. Harkins, who's a pretty famous tactical and out the front knife maker, did a collaboration with a company called Masters Defense, and they made this knife, and it's pretty awesome. We're gonna do this in a two-part thing. First, we're gonna just look at the knife and give it a quick walk around and a look, because it's pretty impressive and it's pretty cool looking, real similar to some of the Benchmade OTFs, but way better. And then the second part is we're gonna compare it to what actually has become the predominant OTF these days, which is the Microtech Ultratech. They are about the same size, so it's a pretty good comparison. So we're not going to do it here. We're going to turn around it and look at it from above. But first, you guys turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. All right, guys, so this is the Harkins Triton done by Masters of Defense. Let's see if we can get in on that and see. Uh, this was an OTF knife that came out. It was actually in the movie The Quantum of Solace. It was in a James Bond movie. Now, this is a very, very good OTF. It does have a couple issues that I've got with it. Um, we'll talk about that. And then, like I said, this is going to be a two-part thing. We're going to look at this knife overall, and then we're going to compare it to a knife that really is the predominant OTF these days, which is the Microtech Ultratech OTF. So you guys know J.A. Harkins is a pretty well-known tactical OTF knife guy. He makes really nice custom ones. This one was done in, um, in a, I've got it written down here. There's not a lot of information to be found on it. So this is a 3.75 inch dagger blade. This one is the combination serrated and plain uh, done in one, it's 3.75 inches of 154 cm, and this is a black, they call it a black subdued DLC. So, this is all quality. I did just oil this because it was a little stiff. Uh, my buddy Tino just got this knife here recently, he got it in a trade, it was one he was looking for for a long time. I like a lot of things about this knife. A lot of the things about this knife are what I would have wanted in the bench made out the fronts uh, that are really similar in shape and blade shape. Um, so let's take a look at it. So you've got the big push button here, and I believe that you can tension and adjust. I didn't find any information. I believe this has got an adjustable tension right there with a set screw. Um, so you can adjust the tension on that, but it's got a really good feel to it. It's solid in hand. It has got grip tape everywhere, which I'm, you know, that's a double-sided, you know, that's a double-edged sword. You do get a good bit of grip, but it does catch in pocket. And I've had this in and on my pocket a couple times and it really does have good grippiness, but it likes to catch. The nice thing that they did do is they prevented that grip tape from being underneath the pocket clip. Now, when you have that much grip and that grip tape, the problem you run into is this is just on with an adhesive so it starts to come up and there's a couple places where you can see the adhesive is working its way out and it's kind of bubbled up and you got you need to press it back down into the things the good thing about it is you can just get grip tape and just cut yourself a new set of inserts the action on it is really snappy and good and the comfort in hand like i said is great but the thing is when you get it in hand it feels like you want to hold it like this but you've got the grips here, so you have to change positions, which is something we're gonna talk about when we do the comparison. But all in all, really nice coffin shape, classic style uh, handle shapes on it. I'm not sure 100% what these are. I do believe that these are tensioners because these would be in the areas where the gates are. So your open and closed tension is controlled there. So it is done with a poor, poor pocket clip. This is not a great pocket clip. I'm not a fan of the pocket clip. It has a little bit more tension than what I would want. And it was kind of loose. And I will tell you, I'm not gonna lie, this screw right here is stripped. I'm gonna talk to Tino. I'm gonna see if I can do something about it. But it's done with a T5 Torx, which is a really small Torx. They have a tendency to strip out in the head 
and it's really, you know, they're not the greatest. But then the rest of the body is done with Allens. So that's a very small Allen. I did not take this knife apart. I don't see any need to. So you're looking at that dagger blade, which is really nicely shaped. It's nice and thin, but it is not incredibly sharp. Dagger blades typically aren't because they don't have a lot of transition. And I'm not a fan of serrations, but this is a rare knife. And Tino was just trying to get whatever he could get that was in the dagger fashion on this. It's an attractive striking knife. Action on it's not too bad. I haven't done any cutting with it because it is fairly rare and I don't want to ruin it or do anything to it. So this is a unique looking knife. Uh, when you think about like at the time, it's a unique looking knife, but Benchmade pretty much has one that is really similar. The difference between that is that the Benchmade is a chisel grind. I like this a lot better because it is a dagger grind. And I'm not going to lie, it is sharp. I just don't think it would be real slicey. The grind on this, I have to say, Masters of Defense did a pretty decent job. But you can see um, that the, the, center, uh, the center ridge favors one side over the other. So it's not completely centered. But they at least got their point symmetrical so it's not asymmetrical it's not all chiseled but you can definitely see in there how that that center ridge comes down and favors one side over the other uh, and it's at least it's consistent on both sides so you don't have the weirdness where it's it's on it favors this side on this side and then favors this side on the other side and then you wind up with more inconsistencies no at least it's inconsistent it's consistently inconsistent there you go so yeah it's got a really good action you hear it listen to that Really solid, solid feel. The aluminum handles are really good. Pocket clip's not great. Now, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go grab a couple of my other OTFs and we're gonna do a comparison. I'm gonna show you why I think the Ultratech won. I'm not 100% sure why this didn't make it real far. Uh, I have Masters of Defense had this knife out for a while and then there's not a lot of them and there's not a lot of information on it. So let's go ahead and go grab a couple of my Microtechs to look at. I have a couple of my Microtech Ultratechs. I have a UTX 85, which is, I think just about the perfect size for a out the front, which as you see, this comes in really close. And then this is my Microtech Ultratech full size. And you can see, well, actually, I guess these are actually about the same size. The 85 is not that much smaller in all honesty. Um, but there's a couple reasons why I think that this knife wins. And Tino and I both agree that this knife is probably a better option. One, the grip tape, while it provides you some grip, can get in the way, in and out of pocket. It's not smooth. I'm not gonna lie. There is uh, some adhesive that's worked its way up out, but it, it catches on things. And uh, then again, like I said, then you have to worry about like the grip tape, you gotta force it back down in. Sometimes it gets loose. You don't have that on this. It's nice and clean and smooth. It's not slippery and it is comfortable in hand and you're not, you don't have that much different of a profile um, size-wise in hand, how it feels across the, the width of it in hand. Um, I do have to say that it feels good like this. This has a better feel once it's open than the Ultratech does. It really does have a better feel. But one of the things that the Ultratech has going for it is the fact that when you deploy, you're already in the position that you're going to cut with. So it's opposed to... This is not how I'm going to cut. I'm going to open that and then I'm not going to cut. I'm going to have to switch my hands and rotate that in my hand. It's one additional step. So I'm not such a fan of that. I do say that the action on this is actually better. As much as I like my Ultratech, the action on this knife is better. So we're just doing kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Action on this one is, it definitely is better. And if that truly is a way, if any of you guys know, let me know in the comments, if that's a way to adjust the actual gate tension so that you can adjust how much pressure it takes to deploy that knife, then let me know because that would be an awesome feature. Um, Cause I'm not gonna lie, this knife is stiff. I actually have friends that can't deploy this knife. You can hear it snap, pow, it's got some pressure. This one's a lot more Easy to deploy, a lot more comfortable in hand, size-wise, I mean, when you deploy it. So the plus of this being in the proper position kind of then goes away when you feel how comfortable this is once it's deployed. I wish this was a button lock auto. 
You know what I mean? Like just push the button and, a, a, and a, it was like a double action, like the Halo 5, but it's not. And so you have to rotate. If it had a button lock where you could just hold it like this and then push the button and then have it in that position, because that is incredibly comfortable. That little area here, either way you're carrying it and holding it left-handed or right-handed, super, super comfortable. And I do like it. I just think that the all the bells and whistles that that this has, this winds up just being a little easier to carry. It's got a better pocket clip. It's reversible because all you have to do is just take this off and flip the clip over and you have an ambidextrous knife. The, the, uh, the OTFs are from uh, the Ultratex. The Ultratex series are truly an ambidextrous knife. Um, if you just flip the pocket clip, they really, really are. This one, you can't really flip that pocket clip. It is what it is but it is ambidextrous. So, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have it. So I guess that doesn't matter. I don't really know where I was going with that, but I, I like the idea of being able to flip the clip on this and have that button. So the button being in that position, this one really is ambidextrous as well. They're, they're just good knives. These are just a better knife in hand, I think. Um, not anything against the construction standards of this, I just think that between the, the grip tape and the position of the button, which is one of the one of the issues I have with the Benchmades, is that I don't like that button being on the front. Uh, I like the Microtech has one with the button on the front. I like it, but I still think that the Ultratechs are a better choice because you basically are already in that position. And then, like I said, the pocket clip. That pocket clip is not great. The pocket clips on these are really, really good. They are comfortable and they're very, very functional. The only thing I will say that this has going for it that these have that I don't like is I'm not a fan of the glass breaker on some of the Ultratex. Like this one's really, really sharp. If you got it in your pocket, you bend over. I don't care whether you're fit or fat, that's gonna poke you. This one's a lot rounder. It's got the ball and everything. So, I mean, in the big scope of things, I I think that this was a good idea, but I don't think it's going to win out against something that is a little bit simpler because it's just ready to go the second you deploy it. You know what I mean? And I know I said something about the ambidextrous thing, but it, you know, this one, you flip the pocket clip, you have some... You have some versatility, but I, I'm not going to lie. I don't like the pocket clip on this at all. It's difficult in and out of pocket, especially with this grip tape on either side. The grip tape, I think, should have been left off the back, if you want to know the truth, or just at the front back, because it really is something that gets in the way. But this is a lot of fun. This is a really cool knife. I'm going to try and do a full-on spec heavy video about this, if I can find it, um, spe find the specs on it. But, I mean, it's not a poorly constructed knife. Masters of Defense was a company... I don't know if they're still around, but this is a discontinued model, and I know there's not many of these. So these things are going anywhere between $450 and $600, depending on uh, what kind of shape it's in. This is a very good showing. Some of the ones I saw for $450 were kind of beat up and had had some poorly done sharpening. So this is a pretty good showing of that knife, and I'm glad I got it on the channel. So guys, that's pretty much it. It was just a little bit of fun to look at. Um, Let's turn this around and do some final thoughts and I'll get you guys out and about your day. So there you go, guys. Like I said, only a couple small real issues with this. I'm not a fan of where the button placement is, which is probably why it has kind of phased out. Um, the button's pretty tall and so it can be uncomfortable. And just the grip tape in general, I'm not a fan of grip tape. Uh, it has a tendency to bubble up. Like I pointed out, this one has got a couple spots where the grip tape is trying to come loose. So, and then it's got a garbage pocket clip, so. At any rate, guys, that's it on this one. If you like the content, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like the content, give it a thumbs down. But tell me why I can't change the content if you don't tell me what it is you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. But if you hit the bell icon, make sure you've got notifications turned on your device or you're not going to get the two, sometimes three things that go up a day. Um, other ways you can do it if you want to support the channel financially. I have a membership down below. It's all tier based. Pick the tier that gets the, the most of what you want out of the membership. But just remember, everyone that's a member saves $5 off my sharpening service and all the members have access to my Gilded server. But if you decide to be a premium tier member, I've built a sharpening tutorial series for those guys that they have access to. Um, other ways you can do it, I have a bunch of affiliate links down below where I have knives, gear, stones, tools, things like that. And I have two 
affiliate links that I really want to talk about, and that's the coffee brand coffee. No politics, no pandering, just the product. Good coffee. I got the sample pack. It's really good. Um, they have uh, K-cup filters, things like that. And Blade HQ, all the stuff that you see on here, you pretty much can find on Blade HQ. Uh, so they don't charge you anything extra. They just give me a little bit of a checkout and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. where you can pick up my merchandise. If you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I'll put them in videos. And I've set up a coupon code so that you guys can save 10% at checkout. And that coupon code is Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, all one word, saves you 10% at checkout. Guys, I love you all. This was kind of a fun one. It's going to be, a little, it was a little bit longer. I apologize. Um, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Keep it clean in the comment section. It makes it easier to moderate the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.